Okay, so now into example three, we have some different type of piecewise functions. And these show up quite a bit, and once you kind of understand these piecewise functions, um, I think you'll kind of see that they um, are a little bit easier than actually the ones that we have been doing, because we have a function, and then we have like another function, it's just like a number. So what exactly are these kind of functions, you know, what are they kind of like producing as far as what is the graph gonna look like? So again though, we can treat this just like we have treated the other uh, examples. We can graph one function, y equals 3x minus 4. And then we can graph the other one as to y equals negative 1. And I'm just going to graph these four, and then I'm going to, this one I'll work out, and then this one I'll do a little bit quicker. So if I was going to graph 3x minus 4, I'm going to go down to 4. So down to 4, I'm at blue. And then it says up 3, so this would be 1, 2, 3 and then to the right one, so that'd be over there, and then let's just go and draw that graph. Now that graph continues positively and negatively, right? But the issue here is it says x cannot equal two. So I go, I look at two, and I say, all right, right there, there is a hole, actually. There's actually not a graph. Um, there's not a point on the graph, there's that hole. Then the next function is y equals negative one, so let's go ahead and graph that. So at, I'm sorry, y equals negative 1. So I go down to negative 1, and I just draw a nice little line at y equals negative 1. Now, obviously, I can't have this whole graph because then both of them show up because then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. But it says at x equals 2, y equals negative 1. So there's going to be a little dot. So what's happening here is it says for 3x minus 4, x cannot equal 2. So therefore, there's a hole at that when x equals 2. However, for this one, this graph is only true when x equals 2. So the rest of this graph, I actually can just erase. Because it's only true here when x is equal to 2. So therefore, you can see that this is a piecewise function where we have a, a hole. So we have a hole at 2, but we also have a defined um, portion of that. And now that's very important because when we're looking at defining the domain, you would say, oh, well, the function is undefined at the domain at the whole, right? Well, that's true, but then we have a value, though, that is kind of, that makes the function defined, which is just a different function here. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, and my range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. All right, and let's just go and take a look at one more example of this kind of sort. So here we have a quadratic function. Uh, again, it's going to produce a parabola, and you can see by the transformations, we're going to be shifted left two, down one, all right, and it's true for all values except for x cannot equal negative 2. Well, x is going to equal negative 2. Let's actually erase that. x is going to equal negative 2. When x equals negative 2, I have a uh, vertex at negative 1. But the rest of the graph is all good. Now, again, I'm just sketching the graph, so don't mark me for my points being incorrect. Then we have another function at x equals 3, which would be a horizontal line here. But this graph is only true when x is equal to negative 2. So therefore, I can erase the rest of the graph. And you can see this is, again, my piecewise function. So again, even though the function is undefined at negative 2 for the red graph, it's defined for the blue graph. So my domain and range is going to be the same. It's going to be for all real numbers. So my domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And my range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so, um, and then again, we can check these with our calculator. Now, the one thing I'd bring up to you um, as far as when we're looking at this, you know, on Desmos is remember that the graph on Desmos is not going to show you the hole. Now, I think what I did for these examples is I provided, like I added in a hole so you guys could kind of see um, where that looks, where, how that looks. But that's not always that's not going to automatically come in with Desmos. That's something that I had to create in there. Um, oh, I forgot to do it. Did I mess that graph up? Oh, I forgot to add. I forgot to change the equation. My bad. I'll have to fix that. So let me just fix that. X plus two squared minus one. Okay. Uh, I'll do that later. No really. Let's go ahead and work on to, let's go and look on the extra example. So for those of you that are coming to this later, you'll see that that graph has been uh, updated. I just apologize for those of you. I thought I uh, made that correction, but I guess not. So on to the next one. Now on to that.